1981. And for the citizens of Drumleash, Northern Ireland, that year is nothing but trouble. Huh. See what I did there? No. Dang it. Anyway, there was a lad in the town whose name was Fergus McCann. I'd imagine he'd look a little something like this guy. Maybe a little younger and shorter. Kinda like a tall me with track shorts on instead of jeans. He was a pretty courageous guy. Carrying mysterious packages full of what was presumed to be explosives, and while doing so, going up a mountain, through a border checkpoint, and hopping over fences? Pretty brave in my books. I mean, there turned out to be condoms and pills in those packages, but that's not the point. But he's also a caring and responsible person. His family likes him. He was smart enough to try to prevent the quote-unquote JCB crew before they managed to completely destroy Mel, the bog child. He even managed to get himself a girlfriend in the book. Not bad, I say. But he's also a bit skeptical and or afraid because of his family's involvement in the Troubles. Oh yeah. I almost forgot. The Troubles. Oh jeez. How do we even start? Well, first of all, wait. This wasn't the music I asked for. <laughs> Dang. Whoa. Looks like we just have to roll with it. The troubles in Northern Ireland were a conflict that went on between forces that were trying to unite Ireland and forces that were trying to make Northern Ireland stay in the United Kingdom. Northern Ireland and Ireland were a single sovereign country before its division in 1920. Ireland was in the United Kingdom, but it separated from the United Kingdom in 1922. Fergus's brother, Joe, was arrested for being a member of the Provisional Irish Republican Army and put into jail at Longcash where he joined the 1981 Irish Hunger Strike. Joe's mother and siblings, including Fergus, were understandably worried. If one or more of your children were endangering their lives for what you saw was no reason, wouldn't you be worried too? His dad and his dad's brother, Uncle Tally, supported Joe in the strike though. Being men, they probably had more of a tougher view of Joe and the Hunger Strike and actively supported his provisional Irish Republican Army comrades, also called Provos. In fact, they seem to be supporting the people campaigning for a united Ireland throughout the whole book, while Fergus is more on the fence and the women in the family just want all the terror to stop. While all of that was going on, Fergus made a friend, Owen, who was a British border patrol, while going on a run up the mountain. He ended up being blown up by one of Uncle Tally's homemade bombs. I should add that this picture is taken right before the Omagh car bombing, which occurred during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Now, throughout the book, I see Fergus becoming a man the more he encounters. I think that having his life turned upside down because of everything that happened after Fergus and Uncle Tally found Mel really helped Fergus m learn more about the world around him and develop his problem solving skills. For example, he had to figure out how to study for his A level exams so he could escape Northern Ireland once and for all. He also had to decide what to do when Michael Rafters, Joe's friend, enlisted Fergus to transfer the aforementioned mysterious packages. There isn't good evidence from the book that Fergus is maturing, but I'm just making an educated guess. In the dialectical journal that some of the students in the class typed, there were three theme choices available. Loyalty, Heroism, and Fate. Now, which one does Fergus give off the most? Fergus definitely expressed loyalty, but I don't think it was the most important theme he gave off. Examples of loyalty are found with the issue of Michael Rafters and package smuggling, and the issue of Joe joining the hunger strike. Fergus definitely expressed heroism, but not as much as loyalty. 
He was probably a hero to his mom when he went to visit Joe to try to coax him out of the hunger strike. What I think Fergus gave off the most is the theme of fate, and that sometimes fate messes up your life no matter what gets in the way. My reasoning, wouldn't the troubles and Joe joining the hunger strike, arguably the two things that set the family off to turmoil, happen regardless of whether Mel was found? That's all for me. I apologize for the unwarranted, you know, beating of the ears you just got there, but thanks for watching anyway. Oh jeez, how do I even start?